Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how to create a simple time picker in WPF. All right, so we're going to use the same example from last tutorial. And let's run this and see what we had. So we had two day pickers, one of them created with code behind and one of, one of them was uh, through the XAML code right here. Uh, check our code behind it's right here so that being said let's get started with the time picker okay um, so basically I don't need this anymore I'm gonna just comment this out let's make sure it still works and not just we're not adding the second time uh, date picker for now because we only need one for this demo all right so we have one date picker and now i want to add a text block i'm going to use this for testing purposes so i'm going to place this in the second column and get a font size of 32 okay so that's text block for the time picker I'll be using a uh, combo box so let me go ahead and add a combo box give it a name let's call the CBO time picker TP for short give it a font size of 24 and close this out inside here I'm going to paste some time span code so basically a bunch of combo box items with certain time of the day typed in okay, nothing special all right so we're going to be using this combo box as a time picker so the next thing I want to do I want to add notice here I used like 30 minutes increments but in some, case, some, some cases you may need like 15 minute 50 minutes increments in that case feel free to go with 15 minutes okay just want to throw that out there so I want to use the date change event of the date picker to generate a date and time of the day using the combo box so I'm going to selection change date select uh, no, no 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 select the date changed okay that's the event I'm looking for I'm going to create a new event and go to definition okay so inside here, first, I want to grab the combo box item. Actually, before this, we do anything else. Let me run this. Make sure our date picker works and our combo box works. Okay, good. And then I want to give a name to it. I don't know if I did already, but the, the uh, it's text block here. So I'm going to give it a name. Let's call this T block, text block or TXT block. Okay. Let's go back to our code behind and here, like I said, I want to grab the combo box item. CBO item. Um, CBO TP that selected item as combo box. I want to cast it. Okay, let me see if I can grab the cast it to a time so I want to grab the uh, let's say var time equals to CBO item 
dot content to string. Let's see what we get. All right, let me place a breakpoint there. Let's run this. All right, so if I change the time and change my date, that should trigger the event and I'm getting 11. Perfect. That's what I want. Okay. So we're getting 11 a.m. from the uh, combo box. Okay. So right below here, I want to say if CBO item dot content is not null open close curly braces then i want to grab that just in case okay so once i grab that actually i want to parse this to date time time to parse Close this here and change it to a two short time string. Okay. Well, I really don't need that. It's already a string. So I'm just going to get rid of this. It's a string already. It's best make it explicit. String T content to string okay so next I want to grab the uh, date string D as date I want to get the uh, time picker no date picker one the text okay so we got the text of the date picker and next I want to say date time dt for short equals date time dot parse here I'm going to combine date and time together so d plus t now this is going to give me probably an exception but let's try it anyway. And next, I want to um, txt text, text block dot text equals dt to string. Right, I want to display this date and time inside my text block. Let's try this out. I'm pretty sure we're going to get an exception, but let's try it anyway. So I'm going to select time, let's say uh, 1.30 p.m. Let's change the date and we got the exception. So I think, I believe the reason we're getting that exception because date time means a space in between. Let's try it with the space and then do the concatenation okay so in this case I believe we should be all right let's run this again so time date this will trigger the event and we didn't get the exception that means we are doing good and if we are we look at here, we're getting a date of 7, 16, 12 p.m. Let's continue. And here we go. So let me remove this breakpoint and let's run this again. Selected time, 1300 date, and we're getting a date of 
7.23 and 1 p.m. So it's working great. One additional, uh, I guess, improvement we could do is say if the time is not listed in your combo box, we can set this combo box to be an editable combo box, and then we can manually type in the time. So it is, let's change it, is editable to true. And as you can see, something changed here. Let's run this again. Now we can, we will be able to type in the combo box. Assuming we don't have the time that we need to. So we can select it or we can just type in our time, say 14, 20, at 14, 20, and let's change the date. And now we got an error. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. So it turns out the reason we gained that error because we are using the content property of the uh, combo box item. So if we get rid of this stuff here, and change this to the text property of the combo box, cbotp.text. In that case, we don't need a string to a string method. We can run this again. Now let's type in a time of the day and select the date. And it's working great. Let's try to pick a date. Change the date again. Still works. So had to make a little adjustment there. And it perfectly works. Okay. So that's a simple solution to create your own time picker in WPF. Okay. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Until the next one, take it easy. See ya.